Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I have a comparison that many of you have been asking for for a little while now. But there have been a lot of requests, so I've gone ahead and benchmarked the Radeon RX Vega 56 in over 30 games, and we're comparing it head to head with the new 5600 XT. Now, for those of you who didn't request this comparison, you could be wondering why it's been so heavily requested by viewers. And I'd say the main reason is the fact that to this day you can still buy a Vega 56 graphics card and depending on which region you're located in, they can be quite cheap. For example, they are selling for as little as $250 US in the US. So that seems quite, quite an attractive price really when you compare it to say a factory OC version of the 5600 XT which starts at $290 US, making it about 15 to 20% more expensive. So. If you can get comparable performance with Vega 56, then that's a decent saving and perhaps worth looking into. The only problem I have with these cheap Vega 56 graphics cards is that they're garbage, <laughs> at least in my opinion. And yeah, that is a pretty big problem. The MSI Airboost model is the cheapest at $250 and it's a hot, loud blower version. There's also the Gigabyte Gaming OC version for $280, but it's arguably even worse. The failure rate with that particular model is super high on Newegg. From 52 reviews, it got something like two eggs. So yeah, that's pretty bad. Well worth avoiding, I would say. For quality models such as the Power Color Red Dragon or Sapphire Pulse, you're looking at prices closer to $600 for new models, making them a complete nut of write-off. So for testing, I'll be using the ASUS Strix model, which has been upgraded with the correct VRM thermal pads, so it doesn't thermal throttle. Therefore, I am showing maximum out-of-the-box performance. I will not be undervolting or tweaking the card in any way, and I realize that this will no doubt cause Vega fans to get up out of their chair and punch a hole in the nearest wall. But seriously, I don't like to test these cards overclocked or undervolted, which is essentially the same thing. And this is because while some cards will feature a stud of a GPU, others will have duds. And unless you're willing to buy maybe half a dozen of them before you win the silicon lottery, testing with the GPU undervolted and acting like that's the norm, in my opinion, is very misleading. And of course, you could also tweak the 5600 XT, though admittedly there is less headroom there, on average, but again, your mileage will vary depending on the silicon quality, along with a few other variables. So for those reasons, we're as usual focusing on out of the box performance for this comparison. So for testing, representing Vega 56, as I said earlier, is the ASUS ROG Strix model. And then for the 5600 XT, I'm using the Sapphire Pulse model with the latest VBIOS supporting 14 gigabits per second memory transfer speeds. And then finally, pairing the GPU rig is the Intel Core i9 9900K overclocked to 5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. As usual, rather than go over all 32 graphs here, which would take quite some time, we're just going to look at around a dozen games closely and then jump to the performance breakdown graphs. Finally, for all results, you can find the 32 games tested on our Patreon page. They're available there for free. Okay, let's get into it. Before getting into the FPS charts, here's a look at power consumption. Vega 56 was a bit of a power peak in our opinion, and Navi went a long way in correcting that. Here we see that total system usage has dropped by almost 40% with the 5600 XT. That's obviously a huge power saving. So it'll be interesting to see just how they compare in terms of performance. So let's go do that. First up, we have the Assassin's Creed Odyssey results, and here the 5600 XT was 8% faster than Vega 56 at 1080p, and then 7% faster at 1440p. So not a massive difference, but given how much more power efficient the 5600 XT is, this really is a huge step forward for AMD. Here we see another example in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, where the 5600 XT is up to 10% faster than the Vega 56. And again, that's an impressive gain given the difference in power consumption. The Outer Worlds results are interesting as traditionally AMD has struggled with their GCN architecture in games using the Unreal Engine. But here the 5600 XT offers big gains of almost 30% when looking at the 1% low performance and 18% for the average frame rate. So really a big step up in performance from Vega 56. We're back to a 9% performance advantage in favor of the 5600 XT when testing with Call of Duty Modern Warfare at 1080p. So not a huge performance uplift, but again, given the power savings, it's really quite an impressive achievement. The extra two gigabytes of VRAM will no doubt be helping out Vega 56 in Red Dead Redemption 2, but even so performance is still very close with the 5600 XT only trailing by a 7% margin. Here we see that performance in control is very even. 
Here the 5600 XT was less than 5% faster at both the tested resolutions when comparing the average frame rates. And here we see that the results in World War Z are also very competitive. I suspect Vega 56 does a little better at 1440p due to that extra VRAM, but overall we're looking at a very similar gaming experience with either GPU. In the past, Vega has performed quite well in the F1 titles, though they were all tested using DirectX 11. That said, I'd certainly expect Vega 56 to perform very well when using DirectX 12, it's been its strong suit in the past, but that's just not the case here at least relative to the 5600 XT. The 5600 XT was a whopping 26% faster at 1080p and 22% faster at 1440p, so a significant performance uplift for the newer Navi-based GPU. Here we see virtually identical performance in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege using the new Vulkan API, though Vega 56 does pull away ever so slightly at 1440p, and again, I believe this is due to that extra two gigabytes of VRAM. The 5600 XT is also able to edge ahead of Vega 56 in Fortnite, delivering 8% more frames on average at 1080p, though performance at 1440p is basically identical. Next up we have Gears 5, and here the 5600 XT offers strong gains over Vega 56, boosting performance at 1080p by 17%, and then 13% at 1440p. And here we see that the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results are quite competitive. Here the 5600 XT is just 6% faster at 1080p while delivering virtually identical performance at 1440p. And then a more typical 13% performance boost is seen when testing with Apex Legends at 1080p. And as we've seen many times now, the margin is reduced at 1440p, this time down to 7% in favor of the 5600 XT. And then last up, we're going to take a quick look at PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and typically this isn't a strong title for AMD, but Navi does go a long way in improving AMD's position. As we see at both tested resolutions, the 5600 XT was 14% faster than Vega 56, so that is quite an impressive gain. Given how massive the Vega 56 die is, and the fact that it packs many more transistors, way more cores, and it also sports HBM2 memory for a 20% increase in bandwidth. It is quite remarkable what AMD has been able to achieve with the much smaller Navi die. And yes, a lot of the gains can be, or some of the gains can be attributed to the seven nanometer process, but quite a big chunk of that improvement can also be attributed to the new RDNA architecture. Anyway, before we get too far into that conversation, here's a look at how Vega 56 and the 5600 XT compare head to head in all 32 titles tested. Here we see at 1080p, the 5600 XT was on average 8% faster than Vega 56. The only title where Vega 56 enjoyed a significant performance advantage was Sniper Elite 4, a title which was optimized for the GCN architecture and its focus on compute performance. So that makes sense. Beyond that, we see that Vega was also faster in Red Dead Redemption 2, but I believe that's more of a VRAM issue. And then we essentially saw identical performance in Strange Brigade, World War Z, Resident Evil 2, Rainbow Six Siege, Battlefield 5, Dirt Rally, and Control. Titles where the Radeon RX 5600 XT made its biggest performance leaps included F1 2019 using DirectX 12, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, The Outer Worlds, Gears 5, For Honor, The Witcher 3, PUBG, and a number of other titles. Moving to 1440p, we see more of the same really. The 5600 XT's lead does erode a little. Here it was 6% faster, but overall clearly the more consistent performer. AMD really has made an impressive step forward with their RDNA architecture. And again, a portion of that efficiency gain will be brought on by the new seven nanometer process. But the fact that the 5600 XT used around half the power of Vega 56 while also delivering a little extra performance is seriously impressive and it goes well beyond just a node shrink. In fact, these findings are in line with AMD's own claims of a 50% performance uplift with RDNA when compared to a GCN based GPU using the same level of power. They also claim that around 20 to 25% of this uplift is delivered by the seven nanometer process with the bulk coming from an improvement in performance per clock. Given the absolutely massive improvement in efficiency for the 5600 XT over Vega 56, and the fact that it's just faster out of the box, no undervolting or messing around required, with the exception of a possible VBIOS update in the short term, I believe you're far better off with the newer Radeon GPU. Moving forward, we expect that AMD will be spending more time optimizing game performance for RDNA, so you could probably, so I think it's safe to say you could expect the gap to widen over time. And of course, that's something we'll revisit next year and the year after and so on and so forth. 
Also, for the most part, Vega 56 isn't available anyway. It's not a viable option in Australia, for example. Meanwhile, over in the US, only the trashy Gigabyte and MSI versions are available for under $300 US. And frankly, saving, what is it, 40-ish dollars on the MSI Airboost model, I don't think it's worth it. And then the Gigabyte model is even less reliable. A lot of reliability issues with that particular model. It's got like, I think one egg out of four or whatever it is on new egg. So probably avoid that one. And again, the air boost, it's quite a loud model. Yeah, you can undervolt and tinker and do all that sort of stuff to get it to a more acceptable level. But you could also just spend $40 more and get the newer RDNA based 5600 XT. And on that note, I think we'll wrap this one up here. So hopefully you guys who have been requesting this comparison weren't let down and found the results interesting. So let's hope that was the case. Also, don't forget if you would like to have a closer look at all the graphs, then you can do so for free over on our Patreon page, the links in the video description. And while you're there, if you would like to become more involved with the Harbour Unbox channel, get access to our exclusive Patreon Discord server, where you can chat to Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community. And we also have a monthly live stream that you can obviously watch live and chat with us on that. Then yeah, check that out. There's a few other cool perks as well, behind the scenes videos and things that you don't normally find or see on the main channel. But yeah, that is really gonna do it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.